Now, when it comes to guys like Mike O'Hearn or The Rock or somebody like Doug Miller that a lot of people question, you guys have to understand that these guys work so much harder than everybody else. And if they have any genetic gift, it's just their ability to outgrind everybody else. Just kidding. What's up guys, welcome to the downfall of my channel where I've resorted to Natty or Not videos in order to get views, <laughs> kind of. Um, so basically I wanted to talk today about outliers because I had somebody who I really respect in the industry, Scott Stevenson, we were talking about it. And some of you who follow me on Instagram, which is just Dave underscore McConey, you might have seen that I posted a picture of my cousin's leg next to my leg. And, you know, Scott was saying, right, so like imagine, and this is kind of what I want to make this video about, you know, this guy is my cousin <laughs> related to me, right? His father is related to me by blood. His mother is not. His mother, that side, has these big legs, right? So this kid at 17 years old already has significantly bigger legs than I do. And so when people see some of these freaks out there and they'll say that, like, are they natty or not? I mean, that's gonna span an entire spectrum, right? So you are gonna have like the true, true freaks out there. And then there's everybody in between from people who can barely put on muscle and all of that. So um, I kind of want to talk about the people who really stand out. So is somebody like Mike O'Hearn or The Rock who at 50 years old is just gigantic, could it be possible that they are natural? But just finishing up with my cousin there, Again, I'm obviously gonna post a picture of his legs and I have, you know, what I pointed out in that post is I have been lifting for over 15 years, okay? I was doing triple body weight deadlifts by the time I was 20 years old, okay? I'm 29 now. Um, I was squatting 405. I was doing everything you're supposed to do. I did high volume. I did low volume. I did, you know, max effort. I did keeping a lot in the tank. I did up from one time a week frequency all the way up to literally every day squatting. I've done everything. And part of it is not just the actual size, although that's obviously a big factor, but the insertions and limb length. So something that Abel Chavai and I were talking about is limb length. Even though he and I are similar heights, my limbs are a lot longer. Same thing with my brother. My brother's maybe an inch shorter than me, but his limbs are much shorter. So my brother at 15 inch arms can look just as big as me with 16 and a half inch arms. Because at 6'1", I have a 6'4 arm span and my legs are also very long. So even if I had, like I've had 27 inch thighs in the past in my peak, and they still look smaller than a friend of mine who had 25 inch legs because I just had it stretched out. So I don't have these great insertions that some people, they just, it makes it look amazing. Even if they've had, I've seen 14 to 15 inch arms look fantastic because the person was lean and great muscle bellies and all of that. So that's a huge factor too. If you're just talking about people on Instagram where you're just seeing photos of them and not seeing them in person, that's a really big aspect that you have to consider. When we're talking about genetic freaks, it's not just how much muscle can this person put on, it's how lean can they stay with barely even trying. It's the shape of things, or even with strength, right? You know, where do their tendons insert? There is a lot of, you know, how is their sympathetic activation? There are a lot of factors that go into somebody being freakishly strong or anything like, or like a freaky body part. So in the case of my cousin, you've got a guy who literally doesn't do squats, barely works out. Seriously, barely works out. I mean, he's kind of into like fighting his friends, like stuff like that. Like he doesn't, he doesn't play sports. Somebody's like, oh, is he a football player? Because that'll really do it. He's definitely not a football player. He's just a huge kid who has these gigantic legs naturally. I mean, truly people are trying to think of these excuses or not excuses, but the ways to logic it, you know, they're like, well, maybe he did this, maybe he did this. It's like, dude, I know the kid very well. He doesn't do much of anything. He had a trainer for a little while. He's interested in calisthenics. So he does push-ups, a couple of pull-ups, and body weight squats. Literally just his body weight, not one leg or anything, just body weight squats. That's what this kid does. And I mean, his legs dwarf mine at 17 years old. So I mentioned that it was just on my mom's, or sorry, his mom's side that has the good genetics for legs. And certainly not the best genetics for legs, but solid genetics for legs, right? So now imagine somebody with two parents who have great genetics and like freaky genetics, right? Like imagine Ronnie Coleman and the Miss Olympia had babies and imagine how freaky that kid would have the potential to be. So when you're looking at somebody and saying, well, is this person taking drugs? 
I think that's a fair question at times, at times, <laughs> but overall, even if they're completely natural, it really means almost nothing for if you can achieve it. Because as powerful as drugs can be, there's a huge genetic response there too. And the reality is that genetics supersede drugs, okay? Meaning that if somebody has fantastic genetics, they can be far more impressive naturally than somebody with crap genetics can be with drugs. So they're both hugely important and the most impressive people are doing have both drugs and great genetics. But if you're just talking one factor, if somebody said you can have the positive impact of steroids, no negative side effects, or the best genetics for muscle size and shape and everything, hands down, I would take the genetics because the results would be more impressive. Drugs aren't gonna change your muscle bellies. Like they're not gonna change the shape of anything, where your tendons insert, but they're also even just from an absolute muscle mass standpoint, they're not gonna have as big of a, an effect that some people think. Yes, those who have great genetics can literally gain 30, 40, 50 pounds of muscle from them because they have the genetics to do so. But if you have totally mediocre genetics, unless you are blasting tons and tons of gear, you're gonna put on five, 10, 15 pounds of muscle, and it's gonna make a big difference for you, but you're still gonna get trounced by people who have the genetics, okay? So that's just something to consider. Now, when it comes to guys like Mike O'Hearn or The Rock or somebody like Doug Miller that a lot of people question, you guys have to understand that these guys work so much harder than everybody else. And if they have any genetic gift, it's just their ability to outgrind everybody else. Just kidding. <laughs> but that is certainly what a lot of people will say. And if you look at these guys, they do work their ass off 100%, okay? All three of those guys are killing it. And while I'm teasing a little bit there, the reality is they do actually work harder than probably almost anybody that you know, okay? Now, if you wanna play devil's advocate, you could say yes, because they have the time to do it, or this is their whole life, or they make their career off of their physique, and therefore they will, they're able to do that. That's fine, but they're still doing it. I do believe that all three of those guys, I'm not even gonna include uh, Doug Miller in this because that's he's he's in a different realm size-wise than them um, as far as like he's a smaller person than them. Um, and uh, enough truly natural people who I know believe he's natural, um, so I don't really have any reason to doubt them. I don't, It's this is definitely not supposed to be him in this category, but just talking about like Michael Hearn and The Rock. Now, do I personally believe that they're natural? Uh, I'm actually not gonna answer that. Um, if you've seen this channel, you probably know my stance on something like that. Um, movie actors and things like that who make these dramatic transformations, um, anything like that. I mean, it, it's obviously, I would say Hollywood is rife with the performance enhancing drugs. And I, I think that's pretty obvious. But as far as like these two specific examples, I, that's why I kind of joke at the beginning to say, that's not really a natty or not video. I'm not gonna go into, well, here's why this person's natty or here's why they're not natty. Um, I, I think if you've been in the space for a while, you can kind of form your own conclusions there. So it's really not meant to be like that. It's just meant to say that whether or not they were natural, even if you took gear, you would never <laughs> get to where they are. And you can kind of see this if you look at pictures of when they were young. So Michael Hearn was like 250 pounds in high school. The guy was a tank super early on. His parents, I believe, were both successful bodybuilders. Look at the pictures of The Rock when he was 15 years old. He looks like a grown man. I mean, that's why I bring up my cousin as an example, because by the time my cousin was 15 years old, he was huge. He was probably like 180 at 15 years old. He eventually just ate his way up to like 250 pounds. Now, was he lean 250? Obviously not. He was 16, 17 years old. But the point is, if, if I ate up to 250 pounds while working out, I would still maybe, I'd maybe have as much lean body mass as this kid did without working out. I mean, that's just how, and I wouldn't even say his, his upper body is very wide, but he wasn't as genetically blessed on his upper body as he was his lower body, but still pretty blessed there. Um, so you look at somebody like The Rock and you look at pictures of his dad and you look at pictures of him. Now was his dad saucing his brains out? I mean, it's possible. I don't wanna get into specific details there, but obviously the guy's got great genetics and same thing with Michael Hearn. I mean, 
and also you look at these guys and how long they've stayed really big. The guys who are using tons and tons of gear, usually you see them get huge and then they shrink. And none of these guys are, I mean, between those two guys are just shrinking. They get smaller maybe between rolls or different times, but both of them have stayed like 250 lean for years and years and years and years. I mean, I think the rock for his new role has, has gotten bigger than that. And again, you can make your own conclusions on that, but they, I will say they both do work very hard. Now, if you don't have the genetics, I know I harp on it, but it, you're just not gonna see that spectacular results. Um, you'll, you'll see results, definitely do it. I'm not saying that the nice thing about with fitness, it's not like a sport, right? It's not like, oh man, you just don't have the genetics for basketball. So you should just stop doing it. With fitness and lifting, everybody should be lifting, right? And, and most of you will be able to get 90% of your results from what I would just recommend to everybody, right? Three, four days a week in the gym, most of you will get 90% of whatever you could possibly achieve if you're consistent with that. So I'm not saying to stop doing it. I'm just saying, don't think that just because you're working so much harder, it's just kind of the cliche excuse, like all the, every article that's ever written on actors. It's like, well, what did you do for this role? Well, I ate six meals a day and then I ate 12 meals a day and I was working out 10 hours a day. And it's, it's these ridiculous things that everybody says, right? But again, read between the lines of, of what you're looking at there. But the point is, for these guys specifically, and when you see somebody, I think everybody is quick to jump on the, well, this person's obviously enhanced. And, and I actually don't believe that, you know? I mean, again, if you see the genetic variability with other factors in life, right? Whether it's height or intelligence, um, there's, you know, a lot of things that are at least somewhat genetically determined. And there's these massive variations. You know, I think, um, I don't think I stole this from Abel, but I've heard Abel say this, is that, you know, if you've got somebody who could be four foot five and somebody who could be eight feet tall of course there are massive variations in genetics and why wouldn't you be able to have somebody who could never get above 160 and somebody who could get up to 270 both naturally you know so um definitely not trying to defend anybody and say anybody specifically enhanced or not enhanced um again i think if you you know me and you've watched this channel you, you probably know my opinion of what is going on but what I am saying is that when you have true genetic freaks and those true genetic freaks have had a kid and that person is from the time that they are young, putting everything they have into it, you truly do get some unbelievable results and some just spectacles. So um, that's my thoughts on that. And I wanted to use an example of a relative of mine where it's like, well, shouldn't you guys have similar genetics? Well, you know, there's some genetic similarity there, but obviously, and that just shows, well, if there's that much variation, in you know if, if we have that small of a portion of so he's my first cousin right so if there's that small of a proportion of our genetics that are the same and he is that much bigger after almost no training then you can imagine somebody who is starkly different genetics what those results could be so guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up love to have you subscribe to the channel and write in the comment section what you thought and if you'd like to see any more related videos thank you